All right, boys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys the rear mount radiator that we did in this car over the winter. Now, for starters, you can see there is so much room up front in front of this engine, and we did that so we could put a Pro Charger in this car anytime we wanted to, and we actually are working on that right now. But for this next race season, we're gonna be staying nitrous, and it's actually helped out a lot with that radiator in the rear with weight bias. We actually have a 54% rear weight bias on this car, and that is killer for no prep. And that's without any added weight. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how we did it. So coming to the rear of the car, I'm going to take off the deck lid and show you guys the expansion tank that we use to fill this radiator. So here's the trunk of the car. We did all this over the winter, put the batteries in there and everything. Uh, we got the gas tank in the middle right there. That is not the expansion tank. The expansion tank is right here, and I actually made this out of aluminum sheet metal, and I bought this cap from Moroso, welded that in, and then we obviously put the overflow right there. Now, this expansion tank is super easy to work with. That's where we fill our water, and those water bubbles can escape. Now, the reason you need an expansion tank is because you cannot fill a horizontal radiator without having a bunch of air bubbles in it. So this expansion tank cancels that out and it's almost like an extension to the radiator. And that's where you add your water and that's where the bubbles work their way out. And we have had no issues with air pockets. So now that you guys have seen this, I'm gonna pick the car up and show you guys what the radiator looks like under there. Heading over to the rear of the car where the radiator sits. So this is what it looks like from the back. We got our nice shroud on there. It's mounted by these tabs right here. I used some existing ones and welded these on. Uh, so there's four tabs, so two on each side right here. Boom, boom. Then we head over here. You got your two tabs right there. So that's all that's holding this. Now, since everything's up in here, it's kind of hard to show you, but if you look right there, so I'm gonna point for you, right up here, that's the expansion tank right there, and this is the hose coming down to the radiator so that it can be filled. So what is utilized here is a Mazir independent water pump. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what ours is because I've, if you plan on doing this, I think you should call them and uh, have them give you a recommendation on what to get, but I made this bracketry right here to mount it right to the radiator and it goes through the shroud too. We've had no problems with it flexing at all here. It feels really good. But this is what it looks like right here. You got one of your feed lines that's going up to the block right there at, straight out of the pump. And then this is fed into the pump from the radiator. So that's the feed line right there. This braided line going up to the front. And then coming back, we have this one going right here and it makes its way all the way over to this corner in the radiator and that's how it circulates. So it comes in through here and then it's gonna make its way through, over and then out into the pump. On the count of three, three. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I mean, the amount of money to do this is pretty crazy, but the end result is really good. I mean, 12 AN fittings, I mean, the lines, everything, it's it's gonna be a couple thousand. I mean, it it is it gets up there with the water pump and everything when it's all said and done. And there's a lot of fabrication that goes into it, but I'm gonna show you guys now how we routed the lines to the front of the car. So back under the car here, let's review. We got the feed line right there and then the return, and they're gonna make their way over here and bulkhead into the cockpit. Now, no, it is not illegal to run your water lines through the cockpit. It's only illegal if it's fuel or oil. So coming in to the car here, you guys can see those are those two lines. Now those come out right there, and then they make their way up to the front and right back out the firewall. 
Now, I know it might be frowned upon to use like what we did, stainless steel, and it's riding right on those lines, but I see no evidence of it eating into the line due to vibration. It's definitely something to keep your eye on, but I would have used grommets if I could have redone it. And here's what it looks like from a distance. Now, another concern I've heard people have with running the lines through the cockpit is, oh, is it gonna get super hot in there on a hot day? And from my experience, no, I've noticed no difference. It's the exact same. Those lines do get warm, but it's not warm enough to make the cockpit overwhelmingly hot. And I mean, come on. So this is the firewall and that's where we come out. So you can see that bottom line is the return line that's going up to the intake, but we'll follow the top one that comes right down here and goes underneath the engine. And we do have an engine diaper to catch that. So if anything bad happened, it would not be able to get hit but goes to this Y connector right here. So main feed line to the Y connector and then the Y connector breaks them off and heads into the block. Now we've had a lot of success with just holding it with these zip ties right here. This thing is very sturdy. Like I, I can't even move it. I'm trying to move it very hard, but nice little connections here. Everything's very nice. No leaks, no nothing. I love this braided setup and uh, I'm very happy with this. Well, I'll show you guys that intake now. So that's just a simple, it's over 90 degrees right there, as you can see. And it comes down, gets really close to the motor plate here. So we put a nice piece of rubber and it rides right on that. So we have no issues at all. Now, I really love how clean all this looks and I love the black. I think this really turned out well, but that's how it all circulates. So it goes through the block here, comes out the intake. Everything has been perfect. And like I said earlier, all this room is great to have. And uh, we will be utilizing it soon. Because when you have a big blower like this hanging off of your engine, there is no room to have the standard position radiator. But all in all, when you scale this car and that radiator's in the rear, it just makes the world a difference. I already mentioned that weight bias in the rear, but this is our first year no prepping and we've already won two races and I'm just really happy with how the car's doing. And I think that radiator has a lot to do with it, especially, I mean, 54% on the rear, you're going to hook up and go, and it's going to drive very good on the big end. And we have yet to go to aluminum heads, which is going to be coming very soon. That's actually going to happen this winter. And then this car is going to be absurdly heavy in the rear and I can't wait. But if you guys have any questions about this radiator or how I did anything, feel free to leave a comment. I will respond. If not, like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.